Express as a single fraction. So I've got 4 um, minus x plus 5 over x minus 1 minus x plus 1 over x plus 5. When I'm adding and subtracting fractions, it doesn't matter if they're just numbers or if they're complicated algebraic statements I've got to deal with. I need to make sure I'm, I've got a common denominator. And my common denominator here, if I just ignore this bit for now, I think you guys would spot the common denominator I need. is going to be x minus 5 times by x plus 5. The fact that I've got a 4 there shouldn't make any difference. What I'll do is I'll just write them all out of x minus 5, x plus 5. So if I, if I start with just this bit, which you guys are used to, used to dealing with, then on the, as a denominator, I'm going to have x minus 5, x plus 5, and then x minus 5, x plus 5. And on the top here, I've already got x plus 5. And I'm going to have, it's already being divided by x minus 5. To get it to this situation, I have to times both the top and the bottom by this x plus 5. So I'm going to have the x plus 5 I've already got and another x plus 5. On this one, I've got x plus 1 divided by x plus 5. But in order to get it to this situation, I'm going to have to times them both by x minus 5. So I've got x plus 1 x minus 5. Now, the 4 is, I think, the bit where people get confused. If you weren't sure about the 4, still do all this bit, you know, if you're not sure what to do with the 4, but still do all that bit. Now, I mean, the 4, it's not really a problem. I can just multiply the top and the bottom both by x minus 5, x plus 5. So I've got 4, x minus 5, x plus 5, I've just run out of space a little bit, over x minus 5, x plus 5. Okay, so I've now got everything with the same denominator, x minus 5, x plus 5. Now, x minus 5, x plus 5, we can simplify to, because um, the, the minus 5x and the plus 5x will cancel out, it's the difference of two squares. So I've got x squared minus 25. And, and for each, I'll do it for each of these, but then you can see you could just write it straight with that on the, on the bottom. Then what have I got here? I've got 4 times by x squared minus 25, right? Exactly the same thing as what I have here. Um, and then I'm going to subtract. This is x squared plus 10x plus 25, and it's all over x squared minus 25. And this bit here is, I'm going to take away x squared minus 4x, minus 5x, plus 1x, minus 5. And that's all over the x squared minus 25. Okay, so let's see, we can put this all, if, if I've got the same denominator, I can just have that all on the bottom, and then I'm going to expand these, uh, expand whatever I need out and all the rest of it. So I have a nice long line, and on the bottom I've got x squared minus 25. On the top, I've got, let's expand this out, I've got 4x squared, 4 times minus 25 is minus 100. Now, I'm going to do this all in one go. So I've got minus x squared, so that's going to be minus x squared. I've got minus, it's going to be, it's taking away plus 10x here, so it's going to be take away 10x. And it's taking away plus 25, so it's going to be take away 25. Now this is the bit where you've got to be really careful with your negatives. Okay, so... I'm taking away another x squared, so minus x squared, but now I'm taking away minus 4x, so I'm going to be adding 4x, and then I'm taking away minus 5, so I'm going to be adding 5. So let's see what that all comes to, collect the like terms. 4x squared, take away x squared, take away x squared gives me 2x squared. Minus 100, sorry, let's do the x's. Minus 10x plus 6x gives me minus 6x x, and then minus 100, take away 25, gives me minus 125, and then plus 5 gives me minus 120, and that's all over x squared minus 25. I mean, if you wrote this as x plus 5x minus 5, or that, you know, that would be okay as well. If you factorize the top, you could do that, um, and that would also be fine, so you could say, it doesn't give a specific format aside from as a single fraction, so 
you could factorize it if you wanted but either of those would be correct in year seven there are 50 percent more bo more girls than boys three twentieths of the girls are left-handed one-eighth of the boys are left-handed 28 of the students in year seven are left-handed find out how many students there are in year seven okay so what I've got to realize is that this 28 is is the the percentage the, sorry the fraction of girls who are left-handed and the fraction of boys who are right-handed all added together now the first thing we need to do is to look at this bit in year seven there are 50 percent more girls than boys so if I set that up as a as a as a ratio if I had boys and girls for every one boy there's going to be 1.5 girls if you can imagine it that way or for every two boys there's going to be three girls so I'm going to use that to create the fractions of the total amount of students who are boys and, and who are girls okay so the girls um, so the so this uh, so this three out of five girls three out of every five students are girls two out of every five students are boys so if I think about the girls who are left-handed now I've got three-fifths of all the students that's the that those are the ones who are girls and three-twentieths of them are left-handed okay so I've got my my fraction of girls times by the fraction that are left-handed so I've got this three twentieths of the three fifths, and that's of the total amount. Let's let x equal total students. Okay, so I've got three fifths times three twentieths of the total students. So this is the number of left handed girls. And now I've got to add the number of, or the fraction of left handed boys. So I've got two fifths because the two-fifths of all the students are boys, and there's one-eighth of them are left-handed, so it's one-eighth of the two-fifths, and that of, of the total amount, right? So that's my fraction of the total amount who are left-handed boys, and altogether that is going to equal to the 28 students who are left-handed. Now let's just, let's just work this out. So that gives me nine one hundredths x plus two fortieths x so two fortieths x I'm just gonna write that as one twentieth x and that equals twenty eight um, so I can that enables me easily to get these out of the same denominator so I've got nine one hundredths x plus five twentieths x equals twenty eight so I've got nine one hundredths plus five, five sorry, five one hundredths. I said one hundredths, wrote twentieths today. I'm not sure. So that gives me fourteen one hundredths x equals twenty eight. So fourteen x is going to be two thousand eight hundred. So if I divide by fourteen. It gives me x equals 200 students altogether. Line y equals 4 and the curve y equals x squared plus 3x plus 4 intersect at the points a and b. Find the distance between the points uh, a and b. Now, I mean, I would generally encourage you guys, wherever possible, just to kind of do a, a little sketch about what this situation might look like. Um, if I've got y equals x plus 4, it's going to be something like that, where that's 4. And if I've got x squared plus 3x plus 4, well, when x is 0, that's going to go through 4 there. So it's going to look something like that. Okay. It just needs to be a, just some kind of rough idea to give, to give you some, something to go on graphically. Now, they intersect when they're equal to each other. So when x plus 4 is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 4, that's where they intersect. Let's take away 4 from both sides. x is equal to x squared plus 3x. Let's take away 1x from both sides. It gives me x squared plus 2x equals 0. I've just swapped them around. Let's factorize that. x, x plus 2 
equals zero. So I've got my points um, where I've got my x coordinates. So x is equal to zero when this is zero, or x is equal to minus two. Let's just take this this bit here, y equals x plus four, and substitute into it. So sub into y equals x plus four. That gives me the coordinates. When x is zero, I've got zero, four, and we've already kind of spotted that from our graph that it must be zero, four for one set of coordinates, and the other one is minus two, two, because I'm just adding four to get the y coordinate, and so that would be minus two, two there, um, and that's that. So. I made the classic mistake. I've done some working out. I haven't looked back at the question and looked at actually what the question's then asking and answered it. Find the distance between between points A and B. So I've got the point zero four and the point two, minus two two. So if I think about that, if that's zero four and this is minus two two, okay. So that distance there is 2, this distance here is 2, the difference between them, the distance between them is going to be a little bit of, uh, of uh, Pythagoras. So I've got 2 squared plus 2 squared and take the square root of it, which gives me a square root of 4 plus 4, which gives me square root 8 which if you want to leave it as a, uh, you know, if you want to simplify that, I can say that that is root 4 root 2, which is 2 root 2. And that's that finished.